guys, Ralph here, and welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness on this thrilling Thursday. Like the last couple of days, there's been nothing for, but rain. Morning and night, is it possible the tropical storm had something to do with it? I don't know. But anyway, I've uh, been on the stationary bike for hours every day, and uh, that's it. Anyway, you saw the thumbnail, the great glance, Harry Glance. I don't usually gush like this about somebody that I have literally never even heard of. You know, YouTube and all that sort of stuff. Yes, and I will get to that. I'm going to leave a link down below. But, but it's enough in that link that you will see why I'm gushing. Okay? Anyway, I have played. Let me honk a few notes, and we'll get to the great Harry Glantz. Life is so good. <laughs> Minute. Ah, oh, man. That is watermelon juice with organic sugar. Yeah. The best. Anyway, Harry Glantz. As I said, you know, a lot of guys um, send me emails and comments and everything, want me to, uh, you know, talk about a certain player. Okay, there's two that uh, in particular, Bud Brisboy and Wayne Bargeron. I actually talked of Wayne Bargeron, but I never did a video specifically on Wayne Bargeron. The reason is, guys, I like to give something special, some from my own experience about, you know, vodka, broils, da, 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 all right? I saw Maynard do this. I saw Lynn Nicholson do this, you know, that type of thing, okay? Uh... Wayne Barjon and uh, especially Bud Brisboy, I know nothing about other than something that you get in Wikipedia, okay? Wayne Barjon, you know, we can talk about the scars on his lip and all that sort of stuff. Harry Glantz is one, I've, I, I've sort of lived with his greatness sort of vicariously, okay? Now, I've told you this before, Vacchiano, when he was at Juilliard, every single day, before he played a note, or before he went to class, or whatever, he went to the library and listened to the recording of the NBC Symphony uh, under Toscanini playing uh, De Meyerbeer, Der Prophet. Okay? And that great trumpet solo, I played it uh, a couple weeks ago. Okay? He wanted to get that sound in his ear. Now, nowadays, he'd be walking around with his, with his you know, headphones in and his iPhone, and he'd have it right there. But, he had to go to the library. But that was how adamant uh, Vakian was to get that um, sound in his ear. And quite frankly, to my way of thinking and to what I've heard of Vakian up close and personal, he never got it. Not to say that he was an extraordinary player with a beautiful lyrical tone. He didn't get the Harry Glance tone. Okay? Now, I'm going to come back to that in a minute, but I'm going to leave a link down below. Now, unless you go through some NBC recordings, are very, very hard to get. He played a very, very famous, well-known jingle. Mel Broyles used to refer to this all day. The, um, the uh, soundtrack to Death Valley Days. It wasn't even the soundtrack back then. It was just the post, pre and the post music to... Death Valley Days, which was sponsored all those years by 20 Mule Team Borax, which is a detergent, which is probably ruining the environment, but that's another channel. Okay? Now, 
That is another thing that Bacchiano used to love to hear. Now, you couldn't get it all the time unless you watched the actual symphony. Again, this was pre-social media days. But it was a legendary recording. Now, I'm going to give you one that is just the last, literally the last 10 seconds of the commercial. Okay, the reason I'm doing that is the ones that you listen to in its entirety with the um, with the uh, actual um, TV show is all reverbed up and it's not as natural as this. For some reason, this got through pure as can be. Now, I want you, it's just a couple of notes, and if you want to go listen to the, the, the entire thing, you may. It's nothing more than taps is what it is, okay? But you listen to that attack and listen to how those notes pop and you listen to that center of tone. Center of tone. That was on a Con 6 mouthpiece, okay? Which is an absolute pea shooter, okay? Anyway, I'm getting away from it. But you listen to that, how centered that is. Guys, that's Harry James. That is Bud Herseth. That is the tone. Now, not only did Vacchiano gush about the tone, Jerry gushed about the tone. And he, as you know, as I've said many times, Jerry didn't gush about, about too many people. He really didn't. But when I was playing at my best and he wanted to give me a compliment, he would say, man, that sounds like Harry Glantz. And again, I had never heard, really had anything to hear from Harry Glantz. Okay. But that was one of the highest compliments Jerry could ever give anybody. Charlie Shavers, Harry James, Harry Glantz were his idols for the tone. All right. And if you think about it, Harry James and Charlie Shavers sound very, very similar, their tones. Now, today's guy is all spread and all over the place. This is centered and pure and glorious. Okay? So listen to that. Also, I have a very, very interesting story. I don't know why. Maybe I had a con trumpet at some point, student model trumpet, but I had um, Harry Glantz's con six mouthpiece in my case. And I was dying for Vacchiano to let me play it. I loved it. He had all these bathtubs, and I loved this. I would take it out and play it. I didn't know it was Harry Glantz. He said, one day he says, so I'm like, what is that? What number? Con six. Really? You know that was Harry Glantz's mouthpiece? Really? I'll give you five bucks for it. I was 18, and I was in New York City for three months. Sure, Vacchiano asked for it. I would have given it to him for free. Right? Five bucks. That SOB screwed me out of the most glorious mouthpiece. As it turned out, he had been looking for this. You can't, couldn't have gotten it anymore. He was looking for this all over the place. And I have two pictures of him literally playing my mouthpiece that he screwed me out for five bucks. This is a legendary mouthpiece. I was dying. dying of, no, it's not for you, Salmon. No, it's for you, you shyster. Anyway. So he's played, for the next several lessons, he's playing, he said, oh, this is a great mouthpiece. He played a lot in the lessons. Couldn't put it down. This is a great mouthpiece. He says, you know, Vakiana's thought process, I think I'm going to open up the hole. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> I got pissed at him. I said, this was our relationship. It was very, very give and take. What are you talking about? You just got through telling me that you can't find this thing anymore, that it's a great mouthpiece, and the minute you bore it out, you've ruined it. You can't get it back. Now, I think that... Anyway, but Harry Glantz. Now, I want you to look at these chops. These are one of my favorite chops to look at. Look at how beautiful that top lip is and how relaxed that is. It is gorgeous. Okay? Now, I want you to look at Maurice... My favorite, tell me those aren't the same chops. Maurice's bottom lip is a little thicker, 
which is probably what gives him the next four. Jerry always used to tell me that Harry Glantz's top note was in G. And he, now that's another thing. Back in those days, even though the repertoire was significantly easier, the C trumpets were in Neanderthal back then. Uh, Harry Glantz played everything on a B flat trumpet. Now you listen to that jingle that I'm going to give you, okay? You listen to that jingle and you tell me what player today could make that center of sound on anything other than a C trumpet or a D trumpet. All these guys, Phil Smith sounds like a, a boat on a B flat trumpet. All right? Anyway, Harry Glantz. You young guys, you should know about that. You guys, older guys that do know about it, unfortunately, it was before our time and it's very, very hard to get recordings. But I love those just five, seven notes. Bing, 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 perfect. Anyway, eat and drink your fruits and vegetables and live your life with true power. Love you all.